In the last lesson, we were able to connect to the YouTube Data API and retrieve data from it. If you missed it, check out the entire playlist right over there. In this lesson, we're going to set up our Xcode project and all of the views and the models. All right, let's dive right in. First, let's start with a little bit of an overview of how our views will be laid out. I also want to explain how our data model is going to look like, especially as we're going to interact with the YouTube Data API. So first off, we're going to start with the home view. And this is going to contain a tab view with additional views. Now, I know in this demo, we only have one tab, but this is set up with the intention that you can add additional tabs. OK, so the home view will house the tab view itself. And then the tab view will contain instances. Well, one instance of the feed view. And this is that scrollable list of thumbnails that you see. Now let's talk about how the feed view is going to get the data. We're going to create a separate component. Let's call that the data service that is going to be responsible for all of the code that interacts with the uh, YouTube data API. And the reason for this is so that we can keep it all in one place and it'll be easier to maintain and also to troubleshoot and debug. So when the feed view loads, it's going to ask the data service for the list of videos to display. And then the data service itself is going to be sending that network request to the YouTube data API. So in the previous lesson, when we looked at what got returned, it was two things, really, there was an overall playlist structure. And then within that, there were individual video objects, right? like dictionaries that contained the video data. So we're going to be parsing that JSON into a single playlist instance containing multiple video instances, each one representing the video data. If you don't remember or you're a little bit confused, don't worry. When we get to that part of sending the network request, getting the data back and parsing it into JSON, I'll dive into more detail about how each piece or part of the JSON translates to different properties of the video and playlist instance. So once the data comes back, we are going to see a list of data in the feed view. So next, we have to fetch the video thumbnail image data because that image data doesn't get returned from the API. Instead, we just get URLs to the video thumbnail. So we are going to use async image to asynchronously, that means in the background, download that image data for display. And we're going to create a separate video row view as a reusable view. And the feed view, which has a list component, is just going to create as many instances of the video row view as it needs for as many videos as there are. And each video row view will have the async image, which will download the thumbnail. All right, and so now we're going to have a feed view that looks pretty good, but we have to let the user tap on a video to view the video itself, right? So that's why we're going to create a video detail view that will slide up as a sheet from the feed view when the user taps on one of those video row views. Inside the video detail view, we're going to show at the top the uh, video player, and then below it, we're going to show the description for the video. And that data will have already. So at a high level, that's how the app is going to look like. There is a lot to learn here. Let's dive in. I hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. Now, just in case you want to launch your own app, I want to tell you about CWC+. This step-by-step -step program will help you launch your own app even if you don't have any experience. And it takes about four months. If this sounds like something you're interested in, I have a special offer for you. I'll leave the link in the description below this video, and hopefully I'll see you there. If not, no worries. I really appreciate that you're here watching this lesson and learning with us. So thank you for that. Anyways, now back to the lesson. All right, let's create our Xcode project. So I'm going to choose app under iOS, and I'm going to name this YT API app. And make sure interface is Swift UI language is Swift. We don't need any storage options. We don't need any tests right now. And I'm going to just create this on my desktop. Uh, and source control I did not check on. Okay, I'm going to change this to the simulator so that we can launch it in the simulator and not on my device. All right, and now we can get started. So the first thing I want to do, let's bring up the diagram again. We have a couple of distinct things. I like to separate things into folders here. So we have our views, which is home view, feed view, video detail view, and video row view. 
And then we have the data service, which is a separate helper, if you will. And then we have these representing our data. So this would be our data model or just model. Okay, so let's go ahead and create those folders in our Xcode project. So I'm just going to, oh, so one thing that I like to do is to rename this. So, you know, when we name the project YT API app, that translates to this bundle identifier, YT API app. But the entry point, they always add app at the end. So one easy way you can do is to right click and refactor and you can change it all in the same place. So you might, you might want to do something like that. Maybe we'll just call it YouTube API app. Okay. So that renamed it in a bunch of different places you can press command B to just make sure that it still builds. So let's create the folder now. So I'm going to right click and say new group and let's call this services. And then we are going to create another group called views. And then we're going to create another group called models. All right. So let's, do that. All right, so I'm just going to stub out all of the files that we need and stubbing out just means creating them, perhaps uh, adding some initial code, but we're not even going to do that. Let's just create the files and then we'll focus on um, just creating all of the scaffolding. So let's call uh, this is the data service, right? So we'll create that there. And let's just create that initial struct. And then for the views, we're going to say a new file. We're going to choose Swift UI view. So first of all, there's the home view, right? But the home view is essentially like we've got a view here. So why don't we use this one as the home view? So I'm going to drag this into the views folder and I'm just going to rename this again. So refactor rename, and we're going to call this the home view. I didn't rename this one. Okay. And then we also have the feed view. Remember this one contains the tab view, right? So we can, oops, yeah, new file, Swift UI view. We're going to do feed view. And then we're also going to have video row view. And we're also going to have video detail view. And then the home view, we're going to change this to a tab view, right? And the tab view is going to contain an instance of the feed view. So that's the basic structure of our project. Right? And we've got to, let's just create the two models now. So these are going to be Swift file because they're not views. So one is video. I'm just going to create this struct. And then we are going to create another one for the playlist. So let's bring up the diagram for a second and double check that we have everything. So we have the home view, which contains the tab view, contains an instance of the feed view. The detail view is going to be coming up as a sheet in the feed view. We've created the video row view, which is going to be um, inside of a list component or list view, sorry, in the feed view, we have the data service we created and then the video and the playlist models. Okay. So we're ready to start implementing some of these things in the next lesson. So one thing I would recommend is if you're really trying to learn some of this stuff, it's best to follow along and try this out on your own computer or laptop. Just open Xcode, start the project and follow along best you can. You can always download the project. If you get stuck, I'll leave the link in the description below to download the project. All right, now that we have our Xcode project and our views and models roughed in, we can start on the data service in the next lesson. If you're enjoying the build so far, can you give this video a thumbs up? Now I always preach to follow along and that's the best way to learn. So if you are following along, building this app on your own computer or laptop, please comment down below and say, I'm doing it. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.